Hi, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I set up a local AI image generation on a Raspberry Pi 5 without a GPU. Scrolling along the screen now are example images that have been produced using this setup. Now, don't worry if you don't have a Raspberry Pi 5, this method can also be used on a Linux workstation or a VM as long as it has a similar specification, at least, to the Raspberry Pi 5 8 gig model. So in this video, I'm going to cover the following. So a quick overview of the procedure, the specification of the hardware I'm using, details of the AI models I'm using, a complete setup guide, and finally, a demonstration. So let's get going. So in this video, I'll be using Linux on a Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte model to do AI image generation. Now you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte model. Another Linux device with at least a similar spec or better should be okay as well. So you don't need to be an AI mastermind or coding wizard to get started. And I'll cover all of the concepts and code that you should need to get started. I will use Python and a collection of Python modules to achieve this. Now, don't worry if you're not a Python wizard because I'm not either. But with a few simple commands and a small amount of Python code, we can start generating images on our Linux device. So before moving on, I just want to mention that all generative AI tools make mistakes and don't always get out what you expect from this. These models are prone to error and misunderstanding, so please be mindful of that when you're using tools like this. As I mentioned, I'm going to be running this on my Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabyte model like this one. Now, as you can see, I've got an active cooler installed on this as cooling our CPU will be particularly important and I highly recommend using active cooling. Now I'll also be using an NVMe base like this Pimeroni base I currently have installed with a 256 gigabyte NVMe. And while you probably can do this using a micro SD card, I wouldn't recommend it as we'll be creating a large swap file during setup and this will put excessive strain on the card and may shorten its lifespan. So for that reason, I would highly recommend using an NVMe card. And the final part before we actually start setting this up is the AI image generation model we're going to be using to generate our images. Now, don't worry if you're unfamiliar with this term. It basically means a type of AI that has been trained specifically to generate images. Now, in this video, we're going to be using the model named SDXL Turbo, which was created by Stability AI. Now, this is the model information page on Hugging Face and it tells us all about the model. And you don't have to go through all this, but you can if you want a bit more background information. Now, this model is designed to generate images that are 512 pixels by 512 pixels. Though we can discuss its capability later on and see what happens when we try to extend it beyond that. Now we have the background information, let's get started setting up our system. And again, don't worry if you're not totally familiar with the concepts or code, AI and machine learning are really new concepts for most people. So the first thing I'm going to do is ensure that we have a good size swap file, as generating images tends to use a lot of RAM and we are really limited on the Raspberry Pi. So in a terminal, I'm going to run sudo nano etc and then dphys dash swap file. And then we want to change this line here from 200 to 8192. And we also want to enable this option, conf max swap size. I want to make sure that we are limited 
So then press Control O and Enter to save and Control and X to close the file. Now to activate our changes, we're going to type sudo dphys dash swap file and then set up and that will create our new swap file. And then let's just type sudo dphys dash swap file swap on and our swap should now be available. And if we type swap on, we should now see that we've got an eight gig swap file available. So now that's done, let's set up our Python environment. And I'm going to create a virtual Python environment to hold all of our modules in one location. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have the Python virtual environment modules installed. So I'm going to type sudo apt install Python 3 dash venv and press enter and it's already installed so we can move on to the next step. Now let's create a new Python virtual environment. So let's type Python 3 minus m then venv to say we want to use the virtual environment module and then I'm going to call my virtual environment img venv and press enter. Now this will create a Python virtual environment for us and Python virtual environment is basically all of the Python modules that we might need all in one folder that's separate from our system. So the reason we're going to do this is to make sure we don't install anything on our main system that might affect it later on. So this will only be used for our image generation. So if we type ls img dash venv we'll see this is the content of our Python virtual environment and we don't need to really worry about it too much but we do need to activate our Python environment so let's type source and then img dash venv forward slash bin forward slash activate now you'll see now the prompt has changed and we now have this bit at the start of our prompt now this is how we know that we are inside our new Python virtual environment. Now we have that, we're ready to install the Python module that we need. So let's type pip3, which is a tool for installing Python modules, and then install, and we want the diffusers module, and we also want the transformers and we'll open square brackets and put torch and we want that module as well and this should pull in all the modules that we need to run our image generation so press enter and this will download all the tools that we need and get them set up so now all our modules have been installed we're ready to write the python code to generate our images so I've now got my desktop set up ready to write a program. So I've got a text editor open here and I'm using Genie, but you can use any other editor. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be a text editor. And I've also got my terminal open here and I've got my Python virtual environment activated. I'm just going to change directory to my documents folder and I've got my file browser open in the documents folder also. So we can see the output as it's generated. So what we need to do now is we need to program to generate our images. So I'm going to step through this line by line so you've got a rough idea what's going on. So the first thing we need to do is import some modules that we've just installed. So let's firstly go from diffusers, import, and then it's really important we watch out for the capital letters in this. So let's go auto pipeline for text to image. And again, notice the capital letters, it's really important there. And then we also want to import torch. And now 
we need to create some variables. So the first one we're going to create is one with our model name. So if we go back to the hugging face page about the model and we see it's called stability AI slash SDXL turbo, we just want to click the icon to copy and then we can minimize that and we will paste that in there. And now we've got our model set. So next we want to create an object to hold our pipeline. And the pipeline is a thing that will actually generate the images and we'll use it later on in the program. So let's go pipeline equals, and then again, watch out for capitals, auto pipeline for text to image and then we'll put dot from and we'll just move that out of the way from pre-trained and then we will specify our model variable from above and then we're going to add to and then say CPU now this is because we want the pipeline to be sent to the CPU to run as we don't have a GPU now we're going to put the height at 512 and we'll set the width to be 512. And we're also going to set a variable called steps and set that to one. Now steps will control the number of passes the model makes when generating an image. Now this model will allow us to generate a decent quality image in one pass but you can set this number higher to generate a slightly higher quality image. Now, just remember that each pass that the model makes will increase the amount of time it takes to generate our image. So the final variable we're going to create is one of the most important ones, and it's our prompt. So I'm going to say a snowy mountain range and a sunny day and I want it to be photo realistic so that should do now let's create an object to hold the output from our pipeline above so I'm going to call it image and I'm going to say pipeline as we called it above pipeline and then set some values so we're going to put in a prompt equals the prompt variable from above, our width equals width variable from above, and our height equals our height variable from above, and our number of inference steps is the number of steps from above. And finally, we just want to set guidance scale to zero and then put a dot and images and then zero and then finally we want to save the image so we'll go image.save and we'll call it generated.png and now our python script is ready to run so let's save that in our documents folder i'm going to call it img gen.py and click save and that should be ready to run so if we now go to our terminal and we do ls we can see our script there so let's type in here python3 img dash gen dot pi and press enter now as this is the first time we've run this model it will be downloaded for us from Hugging Face. Now, this might take a while depending on the speed of your internet connection. And this should only happen the first time that you run this model. Every subsequent run of this won't need to be done again. So I'm going to skip this video forward until this is completed. So now the model's finished downloading, our image generation will start for the first time. Now, this may also take a short while. So we'll again skip forward until that's complete. So now we've just finished generating, you can see we've now got generator.png. And if we have a look at the image, 
you can see it is a snowy mountain range, which is pretty good. But with all this on here, it's hard to see what's going on. So I'm just going to type clear and we'll run the model again. And this time we should get a lot less output. So that's our image generated. And again, it took around a minute and 30 seconds on this Raspberry Pi. And if we take a look at the image generated here, as it's still using the same prompt as before, it's a very similar looking picture, but it is slightly different from the time before, but it's still a really good image. And while one minute and 30 seconds isn't exactly fast, this is local image generation on a Raspberry Pi, which now we've downloaded the model from our program, we can run offline. So it's pretty cool. So let's try changing the prompt and see what happens to our generated image. So let's say a happy dog cartoon style and highly detailed and save that. And let's run the same program again and skip forward till that's completed. Now our image generation is completed, let's have a look. And as you can see, we have got a happy dog in a cartoon style. So this model really does do a good job of generating images in a relatively short amount of time without a GPU. So as I said earlier, it is designed to do 512 by 512 pixel images. But let's change that to be say 800 by 800 and we'll change also the output name to generated-big.png and we'll save that and then we'll rerun this and as it's generating a large image this will take a longer time to generate. So now our new big image generation has complete and that took quite a lot longer that was two and a half minutes. So let's have a little look. So this is our generated picture and we can see the pixel size is 800 by 800. So this picture is a lot bigger, but you'll also notice there's some errors introduced in this, but it's still done a relatively good job. So if we open our other image, we can see there are similar style, but just a small issue here. So let's just close these windows and back to our program. Now, the way you might fix the issue is by changing the number of steps and you might set it to two, for instance. But do remember that will take a lot longer to generate than if it's just one step. So have fun playing around with the prompts and rerunning them. You also might want to change this setting here so you don't keep overwriting the same file. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have fun generating images. One final warning, remember, these models don't necessarily always generate the thing you expect. So please take care when using them. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider dropping a comment below or subscribing if you like the content and let me know how you're getting on what you've generated. See you soon.